Do you want to know Anish Giri's childhood trauma, chess-wise? Well, it happened when he played with Black in the French defense and he missed one particular important moment. He did the blunder. So I'm going to take you up to that very moment. He made this confession during his uh, chessable course, Sweet and Short, which I'm trying to revise and present it back to you people with some small amendments. Also, I would like to highlight a move that he proposes for white, which is not the first line of the engine. It's actually the second. I don't know if he uh, treats it later, if he reviews it later in the uh, extended course, but in this particular one line on Chessable, he mentions the second line of the engine, and we're going to get there. So let's get uh, straight into business. I don't want to waste anybody's time e4 e6 right d4 and d5 so far so good because we're talking about the win now of another variation knight c3 and bishop b4 that's fine the sideline we're going to be placing our attention is bishop d2 right so knight is no longer pinned so to speak therefore you should take on e4 now if you inquire well what happens if the knight takes here that's not a problem if knight takes here just the queen takes on d4 and uh, you got no problem you're doing very 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 well um, but that's not what happened it's queen to g4 right so you can uh, notice the queen to g4 attacks g7 just don't panic everything is great do not panic you're doing very well here and you got great prospect with black provided you watch this video and you know what's play now knight f6 attacks the queen uh and g7 maybe slightly slightly poison now white has also some very good alternatives to be dealing with here uh let's look at queen to g7 okay so queen to g7 now goes for that guy you're gonna play probably you uh had anticipated rook to g8 attacking the queen which has to go on h6 now hold your horses don't play rook g6 just yet so focus on this guy here on d4 with the queen now best line is knight to e2 so this is the best line for white to reply knight uh, g1 to e2 developing the knight with tempo hitting the queen this is the first first move for you to consider when you're having whites now from a human point of view it is incredibly tempting to do castle long there's nothing wrong okay you could also do castle long but just if you're really curious you don't need to believe me just verify what any engine you got available it's knight to e to knight g1 to e2 but let's just look at this one here which is a theoretical move by the way castle long uh white is preparing to targeting the black queen because of the discovered attack from the bishop now we come to the very critical points uh, bishop f8 would be the best move for black to do here what's the problem you got to be very careful well that's that's the blunder he played when he was a child well rook g6 is not a blunder the king, uh, sorry, the queen will go to h4. Then you target again. The knight defends the rook. Then the queen goes back. And you got a chance for a sort of a repetition. And then maybe you're going to draw, especially if the other guy is a stronger rate opponent and you don't mind drawing. Now you could do this kind of repetition. If you don't want to do the repetition, rather than playing rook to g6 now. Oh, by the way, let me show you what was exactly in Anish's uh, confession his trauma his trauma was that uh, he played rook to g6 queen went on h4 he chased he attacked the queen again and after queen retreated back on h6 he refused the idea to just repeating and actually he played the blunder right at this very moment so don't play like anish giri when he was a kid i'm pretty sure he won't repeat it now and uh, don't play uh, don't play the move he played which is a bishop f8 which is a massive massive blunder big blunder bishop to f8 it's 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 looking attacking right it's look like you you're being ferocious here but there is a small tactic that actually brings white a whole piece up queen to f8 you just can't deny it you have to take it and afterwards we got a bishop to h6 checking the cake and actually you're going to be a piece down you're going to move that king i don't think you're crazy enough to play rook g7 here so you're going to move the king i don't know where because it doesn't make a bit of a difference they're going to be taking your queen and if you look at the material you're going to notice four white pieces versus three and two rooks versus two rooks so white is just massively winning here so that was the trauma in his childhood in relation to the french defense in the meantime he refined his findings 
and he came up with a way way better move bishop 2 f8 big difference here queen goes on h4 you play again the rook to g4 attacking the queen queen's move now the f2 is hanging and now interestingly because i told you i'm going to do just small amendments anish specifies the move bishop e2 in his course i'm not saying it's terribly terribly blundering or anything but it's not the strongest because the strongest is bishop to e3 so the strongest for white those of you that play with white battling the french it's important to know this right at this very moment bishop e3 is the strongest move for white to play because with tempo attacks the queen you don't do nothing about the white queen at the minute you're actually focusing on attacking so bishop e3 is actually one heck of a move here because you need a good decision and the only decision you've got here is just queen to h4 you're not going to play rook to h4 because you're going to dropping a piece okay you you just can't do that but queen to h4 okay and now they just simply do it now bishop e2 they don't even take your queen they play bishop e2 attacking uh, the rook here and then you're going to have to take a knight take so bishop e2 you take and you take and of course the black rook takes on g2 so you could do that with black but white is not that bad at all it is just not bad it is very playable it's perfectly perfectly equal white might reply with knight f4 pressure on the rook here and it's doing very well so if you're having white just remember instead of the bishop e2 that um uh, he proposes at this stage so anish giri in his course says bishop e2 but i'm telling you now that the best line endorsed by the stockfish 16 is actually bishop e3 for white to play but let's just look at what anish wanted to uh, tell us so bishop e2 okay uh, rook to h4 theoretical line by the way but white doesn't get better than bishop e3 that's why i'm saying for those of you that are having whites so i understand he's probably biased because he loves the french but if you're having the whites i try to be objective bishop e3 is a strike okay so queen now takes and you take yeah the black queen will be taking back so you don't need to despair having whites because the black queen will be taking back queen is being attacked now by the pawn you just notice you don't have any other squares but a nice elegant retreat on h6 after bishop takes you you're going to take back with some tempo and now you do stay better with black so if white were to play bishop e2 it will end up here a better position for black here <clears throat> and uh if white would have played bishop e3 actually it would have been equal for white but here is better for black okay um notice how there is okay so Viking has to move out of check notice how this knight doesn't have squares to play okay i mean it does have a square to which uh, the recommendation is for you to play e5 immediately because you're going to blocking this guy from developing further and attacking you so that would be a nice idea uh knight c6 with the possible knight to d4 of course e5 again instrumental in limiting the knights and propping your knight on d4 okay so knight c6 being the first recommendation here of course you may say yeah but what if they uh pin you yes of course they can plus they will be vacating the square e2 for the knight so this is very theoretical best of the best lines okay so this is absolutely no compromise so i'm not messing around giving you the second or the third line of the engine is the best recommendation here and it makes a ton of sense and hopefully it would be helping a lot of folks out there so after this one of course uh you may consider bishop b5 for white here which is a little bit of a pin but it won't be for long because king moves away from the pin and by taking by the way by taking for white it might look like uh, oh you're making it a mess for black but actually i'm not quite sure because this rook will be very 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 happy to be playing here plus black is enjoying the uh, bishop pair this is very dangerous and those knights are not as optimistic and happy so yes at this stage you could say black is doing better and with the correct play black is winning simply winning you know everything looks great here for black so that was the win our bishop d2 um just try to avoid that thing that he uh he played when he was a kid and then he lost and then he didn't recover emotionally not even today <laughs> um and when you get to this point here if you're having whites just remember guys bishop e2 is not the move you're supposed to play 
the first move you're supposed to play with white is actually bishop e3. Okay, so just remember that. Other than that, that's cool. So that was the sideline, which may end up in an equal position. It's quite a few moves here. It's quite a few moves here. So bishop e3, that will be uh, move number 11. Move number 11 and queen to h4. Okay, and now bishop to e2. And now you've got to take. And now knight takes and rook takes. So that's way more equal, if I may express myself my, uh, like this, than what Giri proposed for white in his variation in sweet and short i'm going to leave this 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 position here because obviously the rook has got to move and this is a uh, minus 0 0.3 so very slight advantage but look at the position and probably you would understand it that this is far from over this position you give it to anybody during the tournament gm super gm this is far from over this is a lot of game to happen and i think it's quite exciting really really exciting with with black you need to waste the tempo to get that rook to safety probably to g7 and you need to figure out the heck do you do with this knight and with this bishop here it's still playable though i suspect you just might be doing some knight c6 at some point and um so you need to take those pieces out in the game first you gotta save your rook and then figure out what to do with the knight probably knight c6 and the game continues 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 so thank you very much for watching this, guys. Uh, we will be continues with Danish Giri's course on Sweet Short. Uh, and if I find, again, some other lines that he probably missed, um, uh, I would try to bring about the first line of the engine for white and black, not the second. Okay, thank you very much, guys. And see you sooner than you think.